um, test score review question number two. The question number two says, which of the following is a true statement about waves? Uh, a, their frequency is measured in meters. Is that true? Uh, B, sound waves are example of transverse waves. Are sound waves transverse waves? And what is a transverse wave? C, the nodes of standing waves are the place where they cancel each other. And then D, the first harmonic is the same as the first overtone. So let's do, uh, as, as we go over it, let's do a quick review of each of them. A, their frequency is measured in meters. So let's see if this is true. For any wave that goes up and down, a wave has uh, three major properties. We have velocity is wavelength times frequency. The velocity is how fast the wave is traveling. Uh, so velocity is measured uh, in meters per second. So basically it is, the velocity is the same as a regular object that's moving, just the velocity. It's a how fast it's moving, how much uh, distance it's covering in a certain amount of time. Uh, lambda is the wavelength. So it's the distance from peak to peak. It's a, we use the Greek letter lambda, or we could go from the distance from here to here, right? Where it's at the, the baseline. So we could go from here to here, that's the wavelength. Or we can go from trough to trough, that's also the wavelength, right? What is wavelength measured in? Well, since it's a unit of length, it's measured in meters, okay? What's frequency? Frequency is how fast the wave is cycling up and down. So it's how many cycles the wave is making per second. It's cycles per second, okay? So when you multiply a meter <clears throat> and you say it's uh, cycling up and down at a certain cycles per second, you get units of meter per second. Oftentimes the cycles per second is written as hertz, okay? And we say something hurts. We uh, often measure a lot of things in hertz, such as radio waves. We say 105.9 uh, FM station. That's 105.9 megahertz or 102.7 megahertz. So radio stations are measured in millions of hertz. And the number that we give to the radio station is basically the frequency of the wave, okay? So it's measured in cycles per second. Well, coming to this uh, choice then, we see that the choice is wrong. Frequency is measured in meters, no, okay? Now we go to part B. Part B says sound waves are example of transverse waves. So what is a transverse wave? Well, a transverse wave is a wave where the direction of propagation of the wave, so the wave is traveling forward, and the wave is, the, the actual waving of the wave is perpendicular to that. So the wave is actually going up and down, and the wave is propagating this way, right? So it's going this way, the wave propagates up and down, up and down, and the energy of the wave propagates forward. So transverse means Transverse means basically it's perpendicular. The wave is going, is uh, cycling up and down, and the propagation of the wave is this way, and the angle is perpendicular. What kind of waves in uh, nature are transverse? The most common example that we usually give is electromagnetic waves, <clears throat> such as light waves, radio waves, and so on and so on. Um, infrared, x-ray, ultraviolet, okay? And you could also make a transverse wave in a string. You could get a string and uh, vibrate it up and down, and the vibration of the string will be perpendicular, it'll be up and down, and the propagation of the wave will be forward. So those could be string waves, such as in case of instruments, guitar, violin, cello, and so on and so forth. Okay, what kind of waves are longitudinal? Longitudinal, okay? Well, what is a longitudinal wave? Well, it's a wave where basically the wave propagates parallel, so the wave is uh, fluctuating 
back and forth this way, 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 okay? And it's also propagating forward, okay? So what kind of waves are like that? Well, in this case, the velocity is lambda times frequency will also apply. The velocity will be how fast it's going forward. The frequency is how fast it's cycling this way. And um, the wavelength will be the distance from uh, one point to the other point, okay? From one point to the other point. Basically, what's gonna happen is there's gonna be portions where it's uh, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure, high pressure. And then that will propagate, okay? Well, what kind of wave is like this? It's a sound wave. Sound wave. When we make a sound wave, when I'm speaking, uh, I'm basically vibrating the air parallel to the direction that the, the wave is propagating. And you have low uh, regions of low pressure, high pressure, low pressure, high pressure. And then the wavelength is the distance between one region of high pressure to the other region of high pressure and from one region of low to another region of low and so on. So a good example of a longitudinal wave is sound wave. You could also get another kind of sound uh, longitudinal wave. You could get a slinky, okay, spread out the slinky like this and then pull a little bit of it towards you, pull a little bit of the slinky this way and let it go. And then the wave will propagate in the same direction that the uh, uh, vibrations are happening so it'll go forward like that okay so then uh, part B sound waves are examples of transverse waves it's wrong okay C says um, the nodes of standing waves are the place where they cancel each other so this has to do with when waves interact with each other when waves interact they can either constructively interfere or destructively interfere right so let's say you have a string that is tight on both sides, you get a wave going and the wave comes back and goes back and in interferes with itself. And let's say the wave looks like this. Okay, so you have a, some, um, a, some uh, uh, different patterns here developing. So where is the node and where's the anti-node? Well, the node is the places where the wave destructively interferes with itself. These are nodes. Nodes, 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 nodes. So by definition, we call those nodes the wave destructively interferes with itself. Destructive interference. Okay? And the anti-node is the place where the waves come and they enhance each other and they constructively interfere. Constructive. So, uh, part C says the nodes of standing waves are the place where they cancel each other. That means they destructively interfere. So, choice C is correct for this problem, okay? Now, choice D, the first harmonic is the same as the first overtone. Well, uh, when waves interact, you have different harmonics that can develop. Um, the simplest harmonic is when you basically have two nodes and one anti-node. Two node and one anti node. This is the simplest harmonic. It's called the first harmonic. It's also known as the fundamental frequency of the wave. Fundamental. Okay. The, if I vibrate the wave a little bit faster, what can I do? Well, I can have the wavelength when, uh, when the frequency of the wave increases, right? So if I want to create higher harmonics, basically what I do is I vibrate the string a little bit faster, the wavelength of the wave decreases, and I'm able to fit more waves now. So the next harmonic is going to be up, down, up, and versus this one was up and down. So then you go like this. <clears throat> so what is this one now? This one is the second harmonic. Okay? And it's going to be the double the frequency of that one. Okay? Double the frequency of that one, and it's going to be the second harmonic. It's also known as the first overtone. First 
overtone frequency. So, well, first overtone means it's over the, the base fundamental frequency, right? So part D, the first harmonic is the same as the first overtone? No. It's the second harmonic that is the same as the first overtone, okay? So you can now see why each of them are wrong. The correct answer is C. Okay, thank you.